Hey, it's Craig and Jim and we're here with Miranda Krestovnikov and uh, thank you very much Miranda for inviting us to your home in That's beautiful pleasure. Somerset and uh, Somerset? Uh, is it Somerset? Yeah we're in North Somerset. Yeah. Really? It's just yeah. over the border. Ah. Yeah, He's done his research. Yeah, you've, yeah. Caught, you've caught me out. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we are. So, I mean it, you know not everyone can see the views that we have here but it is know, just a really beautiful. Lovely. Yeah you can see why we bought the house. The house was derelict when we bought it and you know it's it's fine now it's taken a long time but we bought it because we've got a little bit of land great views yeah. unbelievable lovely woods up views. behind um yeah. and a dive venue yeah, too, yeah. where yeah. you can giant stride <laughs> into the pond well absolutely. you have dived apparently you dived I've in spent there three for... hours at the bottom of that pond over yeah. lockdown yeah i know my daughter was um paddleboarding with some friends she put her mobile phone in an aqua pack and because they were taking videos of each other and she'd secured it really tightly to the paddleboard and then there was this moment of oh my god where's my, where's my phone and we all looked around tight, and it wasn't yeah. floating on the surface it was somewhere down the bottom so um yeah three hours of diving to try and find the phone and i can't see at the bottom because it's like 15 years of silt down there and yeah. it's just like doing yeah and zero did you find stuff. it no but my husband did and he only spent about 35 minutes at the bottom <laughs> so it's really really <laughs> frustrating so he's the favorite parent at the moment yeah. Yeah. But, um, but i have to say aquapacks i'm endorsing aquapacks Endorse, they're amazing so two weeks it was at the bottom of the wow. pond and the, only at dry. Six foot, the phone was completely dry because there was that moment where she took it out and turned it on you know plugged please, it in please. turned it on please 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 and then obviously elation on her face wow. but to, to deprive a 14 year old from a phone for two weeks that was Ooh, that just, especially during tough. lockdown yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was like, was your tough. fault? I didn't yeah. stop it. <laughs> you, it was your decision, so get on with it. I'm not buying you another one. <laughs> you couldn't, you can't go out. <laughs> I suppose you could buy one online. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you so, also do something for the one show in there? Um, did I see that? No, well, I've done some, I did a Ministry of City Walks on the side. <laughs> We're not doing Monty Python, but we've done it. I've done a number of interviews yeah. with, the, with the pond, in, either in the foreground or background. I mean, that has been the most amazing thing as well for the yeah. children that's growing yeah, up. Well, you know, bet. respect for water. You know, when everybody else with young children was filling in their yeah. ponds, we were digging one. Yeah. Um, and we've had so much fun. The kids swim in there. It's like the best swimming pool in the world with no chlorine, Lovely. completely natural. You know, we have the frog spawn in the in the spring and then frogs. the frogs and the newts. And in fact, during lockdown, we had a, a little sort of aquarium on the kitchen table and we every day we'd go and see what we could find from the pond. Oh, wow. So we had really? newts there. We had meat. I've never seen a, well, we had meeting newts, but I've never seen a common newt or a smooth newt laying eggs before. And it happened right when my son was doing his maths. It was like, wow. the maths is going that way. We yeah, were watching that new, very right. carefully yeah. wrapping each egg around with a bit of leaf. And it was beautiful. So um, it's an so endless source of wonder. There wasn't a pond there. You you dug that pond out and you've got new, you've managed to get newts in there. Yeah, just... everything. Yeah, and we had, um, we had a resident cormorant last year. He came and literally took every single fish out. We regularly okay. get heron. Um, we've had kingfisher there. We've had exactly. egrets. Wow. You name it, we've had it. So um, Very lucky to see and it. Do you think the, know, and the pond's brought all that in? The pond has brought all that in. Wow. Yeah, it's just a source of water. So you, but anybody can, you can do sit it. You there don't need watch. a yeah. We, it doesn't need yeah. to be. A it doesn't huge need pond. to be that big. You know, yeah. you just a little body of water, oh, and you know, that's it's amazing. just well, the, the, the wildlife just finds that habitat and comes in, and it's it, and that's what I love. I think it's just so magical. I think the kingfisher day, I was catching a red eye flight from from Bristol, like a six o'clock flight. So I was up at like four o'clock in the morning, and I remember getting dressed and and just hearing a call a bird call that i hadn't heard before oh, I was like, oh my god what is that <laughs> you know looking out of the window thinking nobody will believe me that i've that the kingfish was just sitting there on the jetty so taking you know photographs with my phone which obviously were really yeah. rubbish but <laughs> but you could see it was a kingfisher yeah. and it did come back a few times as well so the kids did actually see the kingfisher yeah. well i think people would believe it, the president of the rsb <laughs> i mean if, if we can't believe you then yeah. then yeah, who no, can we believe really you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know your birds i do know well yes yeah. Yeah, dealing with birds, I'm a fish. <laughs> yeah. So for for our viewers and our listeners, that we we should explain for those that don't know, you Miranda are a, a TV presenter, a, a broadcaster, uh, an author, a very accomplished musician uh, here <laughs> yes. uh, as well. And yeah. uh, yes, as an author, we thank you very much. Oh, be a book. Yes, we yeah, have, plug the book. Uh, a couple book. of books of the sea, and, and uh, we're getting you to sign these as yes, well, aren't we? So you're going to sign those, and we're we're going to give those away as a as a sort of giveaway on our to social media yeah. uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. So and we'll, did we'll say I was telling you earlier, wasn't I, that I, I was only supposed to allow bring one of these because my daughter wanted to keep one. 
Oh, they didn't want that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're Sorry. you're also a very passionate diver, particularly I with, am a very with diver. UK waters. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you you've quite rare you've managed to combine your diving with your TV presenting. There's lots yeah. of TV work. How lucky work am I? Yeah, yeah. very. Yeah. good. Because when I started diving at university, I never in a million years thought that there was a way of making well, that part we, of my career. T- just I know the answer to this. I think you probably do. Why did you start scuba diving? <laughs> So yeah, so I was, um, so it's Freshers Week at university and you've got, you know, all the choice of all these amazing clubs that you can join, things yeah. that you never thought you'd do in Some a million crazy years. crazy activities you've never done. Yes, and, um, yeah, and, and um, so one, two things I really wanted to do was scuba diving and hot air ballooning, so those are the two that I signed up for, and hot air ballooning was amazing. And I you did, could you do know, that with, here. With yeah. Bristol's like the centre of the universe for hot air yeah. ballooning, so that was really easy. But also when I joined the queue for signing up for the, for the diving, um, uh, scuba diving club, there were a couple of really attractive vets in front of me in the queue that I got <laughs> chatting to and I ended up going out with one of them for quite a long time but it was great actually it was really good so when you're doing all your your training your first aid training and rescue <laughs> diving and, and yeah. mouth to mouth resuscitation yeah, and all that, that sort of thing it was Pick fine me. it was fine yeah <laughs> Um, and we had the most amazing instructors who would give up their time. They didn't get paid for training us no. awful, scummy students, but they would come, you know, every week to the university pool the and do the training, and then go, come yeah. to the pub with us afterwards, and you know, organise fantastic trips down to Port Caris and yeah. Scoma. Um, and even so, then you lo- well, local so. to here, your university was. Where, where so yeah, I was Bristol. at University of Bristol. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we've got a fantastic pool there, and so I spent yeah many many hours at the bottom of the pool watching. You know, bits of hair and plasters and stuff. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really grim, isn't it? Yeah, you're really selling it. Yeah, 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 you've got to take up scuba diving. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. They were a great bunch of people. The social element, of course, is yeah, fantastic, fantastic in the pub yeah. afterwards as well. And yeah. then, um, you know, so first dive actually in the UK was in the shadow of Scoma, wow. uh, camping in Martins Haven in Pem- Pembrokeshire, you know, two weeks down there. And it was just the most exciting so thing. So this and was I, in dry suit, you've done the dry suit orientation? No, I've done I'd done, I was in a semi dry, which right. was very, very, very tight. Actually, I remember, you know, putting it on for the first time in the literature. And then, you like know, walking painted. up the hill, going to the loo, and then thinking, oh God, I can't actually get out of this. Is there anybody there? Please help. So, uh, yeah, but just, I don't know, something about it I just absolutely loved. It was part of it was just being in the water. I'm a real water baby. I love being in the water. Yeah. But this fascination of like, the stuff that you just don't see from the surface yeah. and putting your head yeah. underwater in that beautiful seaweed and garden immediately you see, and wow yeah. yeah there's a whole yeah. new world under here that i had really no yeah. understanding of at and all now you do so <laughs> now i do yeah. so yeah so my first presenting job actually they said um oh i hear you're a diver can you put on this strange looking mask and we're going to go dive with some sharks in florida I'd never worn an argon mask before and I had no training, but it's, it's not actually that yeah. difficult, you know, as long as you get the seal right, you're, you're fine. Uh, and you can talk underwater, <laughs> incessantly, <Yeah. laughs> people can't shut you up. Yeah. So, but that was amazing to have that opportunity, yeah. that was, I was so lucky, and then of course that just led to one dive job after another. Um, and I, yeah, and in fact, there are, there are many years where I never do um, a, a dive in a half mask. All my dives are done in argon masks in front of a camera. Because you're presenting. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. really weird putting a half mask on and a, and a regulator, and it's, that just feels really strange. But So yeah, once, you, once you left uni then, you've done your zoology course bio, yeah. and you've done your diving. Yeah. Did you then say, right, I'm going to be on TV? No, <laughs> no. Um, I really wanted to work in the wildlife TV industry. I'd done some work experience with an incredible cameraman, one of these epic guys that you see on the sort of 10 minutes at the end of yeah. the David Attenborough programmes, and yeah. um, really, really enjoyed that. And he'd helped me make Here in the all UK, the right. So that was, yeah, yeah, literally in Bristol. I mean, I, and, and weirdly enough, I'm still in contact with this guy. I see Is this right place, so. right time kind of thing? Totally, yeah. And this was set up by my tutor at university, oh, and it was wow. just one of those really fortuitous um, sort of meetings. And uh, this cameraman introduced me to lots of people at the BBC, and then I set up some work experience. So the moment I'd finished my course, even before graduating, I got work experience at the BBC oh, okay. working as a runner. And then you work your way up, and you cross the car park a lot, and say hello to everybody, and you make cups of tea for everybody, and sure enough, people start employing you. Yeah. <laughs> so I worked for quite a few years as a researcher there in various other production companies. We've got a whole host of production companies doing wildlife TV in, in Bristol, so up definitely in the right city. Um, 
and then weirdly I did um I was trained doing some training courses I was training to be a director that's what I wanted to do and I did a course um training directors to uh to direct presenters and oh. um, we had a um, we were sort of divided into groups and each group had a presenter to work with for the day but one of the guinea pig presenters didn't turn up the guy who was running the course basically said um you know does anybody want to have a go at presenting <laughs> yes, you put hand in the air, yeah. so and i did it and and it you know it was a bit fun and and you know i didn't really think anything of it and then he you know, at the end of the day we looked through the rushes and he said well it looks quite good you know there's a few things that you need to work on but have you thought about presenting and the moment somebody plants a yeah. seed like that yeah. then you but know, you had right, already okay, kind so. of thought about it maybe or not well, i don't know i mean <laughs> not that not really no? not really i just i was passionate about communicating my interest and enthusiasm for wildlife yeah. but i'd never really thought about doing it on the screen well, and that's the ultimate way to be the yeah. presenter to be able to communicate that, yeah because you, I mean, you can influence yeah, so. them as well can't you absolutely as well. absolutely yeah. it's all about drawing people yeah. in and getting yeah. people on side and then you know just sharing your passion and enthusiasm and hopefully that they'll pick up on that and want to do the same so yeah lots of luck and people say well maybe you make your own luck and i suppose you do in yeah. a way but um yeah, it was it was really good. You know, a bit of a roller coaster ride in the beginning. You know, very awkward contract that I signed with a um, company in the US that um, for a couple of years it meant I couldn't work for anybody else. And so I had a you know an amazing. I had, I had one year of work and travelling the world and doing some diving and presenting. And then the second year I had no work and I couldn't do any more presenting in the UK. It was all very difficult. But you sort of I just you know just waited that way. Waited out. that one out. Yeah. So what was the first stuff, TV? presenting job in the uk yeah um i did a series um for west country tv called water warriors which was all about marine conservation for kids oh, per absolutely perfect, perfect. so Tick we went down to the lobster hatchery <laughs> down in padstow wow. we did lots of marine conservation stories and it was absolutely perfect so it was a series uh, so that was a series yeah i think six and a half hours but that was you know, years, that years, should years be ago, revisited, so. you know, because it's more current now <laughs> than uh, ever before, isn't I know. it? But I'm still doing that sort of work with Marine Conservation Society, yeah. sort of education projects and things like that, but just not, you know, not broadcast TV. And then I became the um, pet expert on a children's uh, TV show on a Sunday morning called Smile that Fern Cotton was presenting. Right. Um, and I used to come into the studio with a frog or a mouse or a hamster or something ridiculous and kids used to phone up and go oh yeah my you know my bunny rabbit's not eating properly or you know what should I feed my puppy or that you know so yeah that was a bit of fun but that was that was into that was my first sort of foray into live tv so that was really interesting all the things that can go wrong yeah I um and then yeah just a few I did some um local history series and archaeology series for bbc and then of course got coast well, I did, well, did direct detectives for Channel Four. Yeah, then I, Coast, I, I saw Monster, some of that, so. and you you did Brilliant. some work in Ireland in some pretty yeah. awful conditions. <laughs> yeah, and zero vis, multiple yeah. bay. I mean, it yeah. was literally back of the It wasn't hand. great. That wasn't that wasn't the best diving that yeah. we did. I mean, so. in that c circumstance, is it just get on with it? And I mean, we're here, we're on the boat, yeah. we've got the cameraman. Let's just see what we get. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You really, can't do much else. Absolutely. Can you? So. I mean, we the luxury of the of the scheduling in those days, we had a week to fill each hour program. You've never had that nowadays. Um, with the one shift, we have to do everything in a day. Um, oh, you know, really come what may. So if it's there's zero vis or the animals don't turn Just up, that's it. it. And very, very rarely can we go back. We did last year, we were filming undulate rays down in Chesil. We, we got blown out by the weather the first time and they did find the money to send us back and have another go. And that's all that part happened. of the story. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but the, yeah, the, the diving down in Ireland. I mean, yeah, it was it was absolutely awful. But you just have to make something of it and yeah. do a lot of archive. And um, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had the visibility been, been amazing, this is what we would have seen. Yeah, um, if you you'd know, seen those just, cannons so, sticking oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as you dropped the in the water, yeah. but yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really hard. It's really found hard, a piece of oak. Yes, yeah, I know. But that's and that's the reality. But I don't. Yeah. That shouldn't put people off diving in the UK because actually Definitely. most of the diving I have done in the UK has been in really good visibility. Mm -hmm. And you know we've been maybe we've been lucky with the filming that we've done, but most of it's been really great. And all these people who say, "Oh, I don't dive yeah. in the UK because it's like pea soup. It's really cold." Yeah, but do you know what my argument to that is? Yeah. People do say that, and yes, we do have issues like that. But we have the equipment to do it, so yeah. we have the equipment that stops us from getting cold. 
yes. can't we? Yes. You know, and you can see visibility isn't as bad as everybody says it is. And mm. you know, if you can dive in that, you can dive anywhere. Yeah. So and also, sometimes when the visibility visibility well, I can't say um, is is really low, you then concentrate on mm. the little macro things, yeah. don't you? And you just get really, really engrossed. And sometimes, you know, if you can see the whole wreck, then you just like, oh yeah, great, and yeah. I'm gonna swim the whole. Oh yeah, that's really lovely. I take my big wide angle photo. Yeah, and you get sections. But you don't forget you? Yeah. to look at the the little stuff. Mm. And yeah. once you get your eye in and you see the little critters, you yeah. know, I love that muck dive. Um, side of things, I think that's great. So um, yeah, sometimes nice. it just gives you another another edge, so or you just bail out and go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so do you find do. There's, so there's challenges with not presenting? To others we've found out, and we're not even doing it live. <laughs> um, but not just presenting, but presenting and diving at the same time. Is Combining there, those two skills. Yeah. yeah. There are days where you just think I'm being task loaded just yeah. a little bit too much. I mean, I've had dives where. Um, you know, you're kitting up and they're filming you um, and uh, so you're trying to do all your checks and they're filming you and you're not really concentrating on your checks you're concentrating on the filming Where am I and it's to fine the and, uh, yeah you know, yeah that, exactly that or somebody said oh can you just do that again and you've plugged something in and then you have to unplug it and did I plug it in again did I you know and so that I find annoying yeah. but but now I've actually got to, to ignore that I, yes, I just ignore the camera you want to get your shot I'm yeah. actually you doing do what you've my got to do now. for my safety. Or I have to so, do this. So yeah, because yeah. that's yeah. really, really important. So do you have a, so, a buddy with you then, or a safety um, buddy to yeah, check absolutely. over? Obviously, yeah. but you still. Yeah. But I don't. Having had incidents underwater, which we may or may not talk about, I want to do all my checks myself because the buddy's there yeah. and they'll they'll do everything for you, yeah. so you can actually concentrate on. Oh, well, I'm just getting ready for my <laughs> dive, and you know we don't know what it's going to be like, and uh, all of that sort of thing for the for the camera. Um, somebody is sorting all every, you know, all my kit out for me, but I still now want to make sure we have a few minutes just yeah. before the dive, right? Wh whatever it is, I don't care if we have to get in right now, just give me a couple That's of minutes. That's the priority, just, isn't yeah. it? That is sometimes the priority. You get, you get a bit too stressed, and I did have a wonderful um, dive supervisor called Richard Bull, who's just the most epic man ever, um, and uh, he would always just, he, we, he and I would have a little moment before we hit the water, and he'd just look at me and go, Miz, um, are you okay? And he looked me straight in the eyes and he could tell if, if I was a bit like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got to do this. And sometimes they give you the, all this kit and they go, well, can you say these extra lines before you go in? Or while you're down there, can you just do this? Or we're diving with a cuttlefish, they give you a mirror. Can you put this in front of the cuttlefish to see if it recognises it's in reflection? And I'm like, just leave me alone! <laughs> you know? So he would literally say, back off everybody right okay we are diving and this is a serious thing yeah, people yeah. dive sometimes so let's just you know so he when he had this wonderful sort of aura and people are just like right back off because yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can and it's really really important yeah, yeah i can is. completely just... identify with that because even when we're diving yeah. together i always want that minute Yes. Just yeah. and it's a minute, minute. You do not. You want twenty five <laughs> minutes. No, I, th that last minute where you just go. <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah. do, and, and you, you have, have a, a one side. And then a moment just to and... sit. It's like when you get in the car in the morning. You sit there. And you go right. Have I got my keys? Have I got <laughs> yeah, my mobile? Have I got yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you just need that moment. And sometimes yeah. we don't because they they're going right. We're ready. Three, two, one, and you're in the water, and you hit the water, and you suddenly think, oh, yeah. oh, 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 me to do them right now and, not and now I just say, say no. no okay stop it we're, we're not you know or yeah. I'm not feeling comfortable yeah. or yeah actually just I have a headache right sky. now because of yeah. all of this so yeah. we'll just take five if that's okay so yeah. um, and I think most people respect that you do yeah. get the odd person who's just really yeah. really they're so wrapped up in what so. they have to do they completely yeah. oblivious and like, oh my god to... but it's high tide or you know whatever and you're like okay, you know what to do just... just shove some scuba gear on <laughs> push them in and say go on give it a go have a go yeah. So it's all a balance, but I actually saying that the moment I hit the water, then I do have this incredible sense of calm. Like I've left yeah. all of that on the boat, and it's just me and and the diving really. And so, yes, okay, there's a cameraman there yeah. as well, and we're all chatting away. But often I'm like, oh, I can't hear you. Sorry, can't hear you. Can't hear you. And I just like just go. <laughs> so off how many there, times so. is there a cut and do that again? And and. Uh, well, once we're in the water, that's that's it, and we, they just you have just to follow rolling. what what you're doing. Now you're in um, control. And often the comms don't work underwater, so so often, um, and so you're a bit stuck. But then, yeah. you know, there are people that I've dived with many many times so you just you know once once you're just in the zone, you're in the water, you just know how each other work. Yeah. You've got a little plan, you stick to the plan, 
and and everything's fine and I, I quite like that we've yeah. left all that chaos and organization on the boat and actually now we're just enjoying the dive and we do we just enjoy yeah. the dive at the end of the day and do you know if we manage to film something while we're down there that's great <laughs> get a bit of presenting done as well yeah as yeah <laughs> so it's and I just love it every time I hit the water I love it I never never jump in and think oh god this is just like work it's really hard I just always think oh, Fantastic! I'm so lucky. Uh, Jim, Jim and I, as you know, have driven down from Norfolk today. I know. You did do. It's a long way to come. Yeah, you're worth it. Are you? Oh, yeah, oh, to do this. Oh, what a I guy! Got a mug as well. You got me a mug. Miranda's mug. Got a mug. Yeah, yeah. Got a mug. But, but yeah. you've dived in Norfolk. I mean, you did. Uh, yeah. um, um, time trial. 2004 yeah, time trial. Yeah. Time, yeah. time yeah. trial. Yeah. Back in 2004. Yeah. Did you get to dive on the chalk reef or any of the wrecks? We have done the chalk reef, and the chalk reef was awesome. Yeah. I Incredible. loved the chalk reef. In fact, the one show did a piece about the chalk reef, um, and that was just fantastic. And I have to say, you know, Norfolk's not up there in my sort of top ten places to dive what? in the UK no. because Cup. quite a bit of the diving. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, when we were talking about visibility, it's not. Not often that. It's the right time of year. Yeah, right time of year. You can get 10, 15 meters. But the chalk reef, meters. we had just a great, great time, and the life there was amazing. Yeah, little just, cuttlefish, tiny so little just, cuttlefish. Just again, and... all the tiny stuff. Yeah. Really, you just need to look, you know, because people do just go over the top and go, oh, it's not much here. It's a bit of seaweed. Yeah. Get Drop in down there. and you're get down right. there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, I love it. I think because Norfolk's so far away, you know, just is it? as a recreational, <laughs> it's quite a long drive. This I morning, didn't realise. Yeah. Didn't notice. Um, so it is. Yeah, it's not somewhere that you know. For me, I, just, I head down to Pembrokeshire or the south coast or something. That's a lot closer. So I don't know that area around Norfolk very very well, but. Um, I mean, you are a real advocate, as Craig said at the start there, you're a real advocate for UK diving, as we are, and we we think there's so many great sites mm. around the UK that people just don't realise. But UK everything, you know, UK holidaying as well, yeah. you know, with COVID and everything, we don't always have to jump on a plane no. and go People abroad. are finding that out we now. Really They're realising what we've got. Yeah, and okay, I love going to the Red Sea and the Maldives, yeah. you know, we all it's do. Lovely. But actually, there's a huge amount here and it's really special and this is ours, this yeah. belongs to us, it's our exactly. back garden yeah. that we need to explore and, and discover and protect. And, but I think and the variety of, of life that we've got from basking sharks to blue sharks to cuttlefish to mm. seals to yeah. mm. seahorses, yeah. I mean, mm. who wouldn't want to see seahorses? In but the UK. In the UK. How exciting is that? I know, it's amazing. Really, I mean, really, really hard to see, I have to say. Um, so we were diving them in Sutherland. I think we did them for Coast Anthem for the one show. Yeah. And they are notorious. I mean, if I had been looking for one on my own, I wouldn't have seen it because they're so beautifully camouflaged in that seagrass. But um, And once you find it as well, once you see that seahorse, you haven't... You, can't your take your eye off it. And I was doing this interview underwater, obviously, um, with a with a, um, a scientist down there, and sort of, you know, again, not taking my eye off the seahorse, but feeling it was rather weird to be asking questions to somebody and not actually looking at them. So I thought I'd better turn my head and look at you, and then you turn your head back, and, it, and it's gone. Oh, there go. It was here a minute ago. So don't take your eye off the seahorse. But it hadn't gone. So it's just camouflaged. Just beautifully camouflaged. Yeah. 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 And I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're doing okay. They have been doing really, really badly in previous years, but I think this year the numbers seem to be up. Um, we just need it's, it's endless, it's sort of same old story. We need protection of the, the areas yeah. where that they're, they're found, where they're breeding, um, you know, just to stop people. But I mean, that's incredibly exciting to see something like that. It like is. we said, so yeah. the basking sharks, the blue but sharks. But all of it so. though, yeah. yeah. But, but you know, friendly dolphins, yeah. grey yeah. seals. I mean, some of the people, I'm sure get very bored of me saying, some of the best diving I've ever done, some of the best wildlife encounters I've ever had have been right here in the UK. Yeah. I mean, going up to the Farn Islands. Well, we, we bang on about the Farn, don't we, all the time? How good is that? Man. It's yeah. the I best, mean, one of the best places yeah. in the world. We try and do it once a year. I do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look for the whole year. You talk to people and try and tell them. And you know, as a as a photographer, and, and you try, you know, as soon as you put those images and those videos mm -hmm. on, everyone's mm -hmm. like. Wow, well, come and learn to dive. Yeah, you, you I was going to say the thing is, you can that, tell people they always go, "Wow, that's amazing." Yeah. But it's even better than that. Yes, Once you get it under, is, it's yeah. even better so than that. Any fun. justice, yeah. you know, that experience of a, of an air-breathing mammal yeah. being near you and putting an arm around Coming over. right up to your yeah. face yeah. and well, looking you can, at I mean, yeah. I had yeah. one, but, uh, and I've seen it. You know, like when dogs, like your dog, yeah. <laughs> will go around in circles yeah. to get... Yeah. Play with these you. seals on, do that in the kelp bed. And they go around about... And they really want to play as well. And they let you stroke their heads, don't they? And they want you to interact with them. Yeah, and it is just... Oh, it's 
it's so appealing, isn't it? It really yeah. sort of and that's good viz. I mean, yeah. I've not yeah, been there really, when it's yeah, been I've, terrible yeah. viz. Always good viz. Yeah. Over there. Um, yeah, it's a little bit cool, but we've got our dry suits. But mm. that could cost you. I think it costs us normally about 250, 270 pounds for three days. For three nights, yeah. drive up accommodation, Thursday, food. Yeah. Dive Friday, Saturday, Sunday, drive home Sunday night. Anything. Yeah. Six dives. Yeah. That is cheap, isn't yeah, it? So when people say diving's expensive, doesn't have to be. It's doesn't not, is it? Yeah. And no. who, you would pay. People pay more than that to go and see a stupid show in a. a yeah. Oh a, God, absolutely. You know, yeah. And we're doing it with wild animals, but. For, for Easy for you to say. Uh, <laughs> animals. <laughs> animals. <laughs> Hang on, animals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I totally, I totally agree. It's the, it's the, the most fun that you'll have in the water, and and you feel like a real kid as yeah. well, don't you? Yeah. Just you know, any and I. So it's, the moments like that where I almost forget that the camera's running, and I just think, right, I'm just going to enjoy this moment yeah. and just go and play, and I don't really care. You know, so you've got two days in. next week. There's nothing on the agenda. You Ooh. can dive anywhere in the UK. You're unlimited. There's no work involved. Where are you going diving? Ooh. Oh, I, I, I would say the farms because I don't have a farms trip planned this year. So, so I would it's that say, interaction yeah, with the say. seals. And, I uh, think so, yeah. It is the highlight of the year when yeah. we go out there. In fact, we try and, and, and get some sort of story, some sort of filming every year up there yeah. um, just to make sure that we get another dive up there. So, you know, we'll find another angle on filming those amazing grey seals. It really is so special. So you always dive really, that so. with full face so that you can talk Yeah, I don't think and, I have uh, ever dive for seals on a half mask actually so yeah yeah but just just amazing it blows my mind every time and so I don't that think is your favorite encounter then yeah far. i think that and i've had i had an amazing encounter with a friendly dolphin down um in plymouth um where we were diving a wreck and we were talking about the succession of life on a wreck and so you know a ship goes down and what sticks to it what what comes along and feeds on that and all that and sort of thing and, and, and yeah, yeah yeah um and I was there and I was we had this beautiful pink sea fan and I was there sort of chatting about this pink sea fan and in my ear I could hear all very bad comms, somebody <laughs> shouting something in my ear. Um, and they were they were alerting me that right behind me was this friendly dolphin. Um, and there was a moment also it was like, well hang on, we've just you know, spent weeks and weeks and weeks setting up this trip and we've got only today to film this story for the one show and this is what we do. You do know, we stop stuff, and go other stuff happens, <laughs> you've got to be really focused. I was like, He'll be here tomorrow, yeah. and so will the pink sea fan. But the dolphin, but the dolphin, dolphin won't. won't. So I think, well, whatever happens, we just we go and do the dolphin, and then you know we'll yeah. just make a call to the one show. We need to stay on another day and do the wreck because we, <laughs> we didn't get it. <laughs> we got something better instead, and that again, amazing, just like the seals. You know, a wild animal approaching you, yeah. so Wanting inquisitive. Yeah, say, yeah. yeah say they want to know what we are. Way, don't they? Yeah. I really want to play with you. You know, rolling over like my dog. Yeah. You know, come and literally tickle my tummy, yeah. sort of thing. And you just you. Can't can't resist but then also there's another moment where as a presenter it, I you know it's a look but don't touch policy with me yeah and how am I going to be seen I don't want to go and no. or even reach out <laughs> yeah. so I have to say I was, you know, very gingerly reached out with my with my fin to try and tickle this dolphin but and it was you know clearly enjoyed it so. but in those moments clearly that dolphin is instigating that yes. interaction yeah it, you know it's very different to when you sometimes see people irresponsibly swimming mm. after a turtle oh. Or, that's terrible, and, and that yeah. really does bug me. I mean, if you're the farms again, we're harking on about the farms. is a perfect example. You're just stationary in a water yeah. column, and you and, need and, to let that animal approach yeah, you. Yeah, and then, and they will, and they yeah. do. Yeah. And, and that's different to swimming after yeah. something and chasing it. And we were uh, up in Scotland over the summer, and um, we went up to Channery Point, and we every time we go up to Scotland, we always go there to to, to watch the dolphins. And there were lots of people in the water on kayaks and, and paddle boards and things like that. But one complete idiot in full view of all the people who were standing there at Channery Point, dolphin watching, you know, on his paddle board, you know, racing up to the dolphins, oh. getting absolutely as close as possible. And everybody starts to get a bit irate. And There's always yeah, one and though, isn't there? some idiot. And it's just like, why can't you just sit on your paddle board yeah, if yeah. the dolphin wants to come up to you? I mean, you're not going to you're not gonna out paddle <laughs> no. a dolphin, are you? Who wants to go? I mean, I think that's the encouraging thing is that most of the time, unless you're in, a, in some sort of powered craft, um, you know, that, that animal yeah, is going away. to just swim away. I mean, I remember my first encounter with a basking shark, you, know, you get really, really close, 
and you you know you're trying to fin to sort of stay alongside if you can but one flick of that tail it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> where did that go i bet that was pretty so, amazing but that one person on that paddleboard just ruins everyone's right. day yeah. been yeah. watching and then and people go oh paddleboarders are all really irresponsible and blah 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 yeah. no they're not actually they're all really responsible it's just that one idiot yeah. i desperately but that's the same as walkers in the country drivers anyone there's always the irresponsible yeah. one yeah. but it's so always you, it for the rest you, of us yeah so you, you can't but, the dolphin swam away, so yeah, it was fine. It was fine. But, um, yeah, that does make me. It makes me that jet skiers, um, you know, and and yeah, people in ribs who decide that it's a really good idea to just circle an animal, whether it be yeah. a whale or a dolphin or yeah, whatever, uh, just makes my blood boil. Really so your favourite awesome. encounters of all time are in the UK, right? Yeah, is is that that friendly dolphin and the seals yeah. up in the Farne Islands? I mean, it's you know, it's amazing to see a manta ray, yeah. um, you know, and watch them coming over and all that sort of thing. But I just I think again because it's special and it's here right mm. here you know in the UK and that I can take my kids to do it that anybody can do it you don't have to fly you don't have to go too far it's all very very accessible and it's another thing that I try and talk about as much as possible is the accessibility of diving yeah. I know that because of what I do um, I get some very privileged access um, to, to wrecks that you know maybe not everybody's allowed to dive and, and um, you know habitats and, and secret locations for, <laughs> yeah. for wildlife and there's a few of those but at the end of the day i want to be promoting diving that anybody can do you yeah. know you've, you've qualified you so haven't got a huge here. amount of money yeah. Yeah. um but you know just you know drive somewhere down to chesil beach and just dive yeah. off the beach you know yeah. it's yeah. as simple as that it's a bit of a walk <laughs> I hate yeah. those but there's, down there's lots Chesil, of those isn't there there was lots so of those many areas of in the yeah. uk yeah. 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 on the north yeah. coast we yeah. did recently same yeah. as very similar um, topography to Chesil Beach in the stony, yeah. the hard works, wall comedy gear on. But yeah. but once you're in there, there's a, a wreck there. Uh, the Rosalie was torpedoed in the in the First World War by a U-boat, and and you see the boilers there, and the, the, you've got the whole historical element and the wildlife around. I it think is incredible. the colours, the colours, and you've got oranges, purples, whites, and you've got lobsters, you've got crabs, you've got mm. jellyfish, you've got fit, you've got everything, haven't yeah. it? And, yeah. it's, and it costs and it's nothing seven to meters. The beach, yeah, yeah, it's seven easy, meters, easy. and you can yeah. see the mast. Yes. Four quid for an airfield, yeah. and yeah. you can. And you'd be quite see. fit. To carry yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> Craig carries mine for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I yeah, if you haven't dived for a little while, and I think when we were filming on Chesil last year, and I wasn't very dive fit, and we'd had a, I don't know, a quiet summer or something like that, and I was struggling with my gear. Yeah. I have to say on those on those stones. But then you hit, you know, you build up a bit of a sweat, don't you? And yeah. then you hit the water, yeah. and you're nice and warm. Yeah, that's it. So TV takes you diving so I don't suppose you get any opportunity or any desire even to go into the inland dive sites because you're not far from Vobster here yeah. have, you, have you dived my Vobster before? This training in Vobster ah, yeah absolutely so you're yeah, qualified too. yeah 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 so um, I, I'm not a, I'm not a massive fan I have to say I mean I do like my marine life but as long as there's a few fish swimming around that's okay I mean I suppose most of the the inland diving is going to be for training, training purposes yeah, yeah. or um, we'll go and film pipe or yeah, sturgeon yeah. or something yeah, like yeah. that yeah. um but i'm i am a big fan of the sea um yeah. i just i don't know something about the salt water that just you know it's just it ticks more boxes for it's me just so much but, in so, it compared yeah to but i mean there. over the over the winter period i'll be down at bobster probably doing a bit more training or a bit something i don't know we'll, just we'll keeping current so, and, and keeping yeah. your skills in ready for yeah the next time i think those inland dive sites you know they're so important for us especially over the winter period and they're yeah. you know very accessible and very it's very it's not very challenging is but it? i you think know, with the sea rock up in your car yeah. you, know, you just jump in i mean it couldn't get any easier than that so uh, but we, we, were, were, yeah. we were at one at the weekend and there was at least a hundred plus divers there, all well, keeping socially, yeah. yeah, more. And they've all really organised it very well. Yeah, like, yeah this whole very, socially distancing well. thing, yeah. and yeah. they've got people on rotors. One way route so, round, yeah. and uh, not yeah. underwater, obviously. You, you we're wearing the best PPE the, yeah. <laughs> you could ever <laughs> yes, wear. Absolutely. But, but yeah. knowing the restaurants and, yeah. uh, and you know, uh, toilets and everything, are all, mm. yeah, they've filled it through, even the parking. Um, and they're still incredibly popular, yeah. the, yeah. the uh, inland dive sites, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, I've actually spent a lot of time at Bobster over the summer. Um, paddle boarding because they decided yeah. to do paddle boarding down there. So I haven't actually been diving over the summer, but I've, but I've been down there. But I have been very, very impressed by the whole thing, and everybody's very, very respectful. But you can't really get that unless you're on a boat. Uh, I don't think you really want to get that close to people no. fitting up. You want a bit of space, yeah, like, space right, yeah. like this, really. You know, I want all my, you know. So um, 
yeah it's it's a good sport to be in i think in these sort of current climates yeah, really. i think the sea is better because every dive is different and you don't know what you're going to see you I could go to the like same the spot unpredictability. Yeah. i don't like my life to be the same every day i don't like that uniformity i love the challenge it's like if i go for a walk i'd like to go like, there's okay it is lovely doing the same walk every day but i do like to to have something different something new to look at yeah and i think that's the thing with with, with marine diving isn't it it's just you never know what's going to throw at you you never know what the conditions are going to be like um yeah, yeah it's just more of a challenge isn't it yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah absolutely yeah so you you have you done any diving with your own family have you managed to get the kids involved and, well i managed uh, to get one of them trained up yeah we went to gozo um a couple of years ago and got my eldest child uh, Go, so it's she's Malta, seen, isn't it? so yeah, yeah, yeah Malta, which yeah. was awesome actually. it's supposed to be incredible diving that's my really not dive. really yeah. beautiful diving yeah, yeah. I'm really happy that we chose gozo because we i mean you can you know you can choose anywhere really i mean i didn't i didn't think it was appropriate to train an 11 year old in this country i'm sure but i i mean i would have a go now now i've got her trained up but um i just thought we will go somewhere nice and warm but we don't need to go to the red sea goes it's great actually yeah. with, uh, um, uh, temperature wise it was very quiet as well you know malta's really really busy and it's like you know beaches were really full and but gozo is really sleepy and beautiful great diving out there had a fantastic time really good training she um, so it? she's she absolutely loved it she really did she took to it just immediately and loved every minute of it paddy, was, that was paddy yeah. yeah and i what i really really loved about her training which i didn't have when i was training from those years ago is that um there's an awareness of the conservation side of very things. much so now yeah, the yeah, whole paddy aware brilliant. thing which yeah. is amazing and so yeah. you know every dive the, she the did look, don't she was, touch as we said yes, before and you know the, leave though. only bubbles and she, and she'd come she come out from a dive and it wasn't necessarily what fish she'd seen or what you know what she they've got amazing limestone formations out there as well yeah. she'd be so oh you know I've I, I managed to pick up this plastic bag and this bottle and well, do you know we <laughs> say our favorite bits of kit are our mesh bags yeah because yeah. every single dive we take them that's every single dive we can yeah. pick something Taking up put it in and Absolutely. get as a diver yeah. I feel like I've made an impact and yeah. it's a positive Absolutely. impact that's how she felt yeah yeah she felt very sort of empowered that she could make a difference as a diver so um yeah she was yeah, well, I think we, you know, as divers, I think we have a responsibility to do that, in my opinion, because, you know, we can see what's going on under there, yeah. can't we? There's well, a lot people of people that don't, just don't see. No, well, yeah. out of sight, yeah. out of yeah. mind. You isn't see it? what's on the beaches, you see what's on the surface, but yeah. you don't see what's underneath. So, I mean, like yeah. ghost fishing or, or people like that, and many organisations that do that kind of thing, they see all that, yeah. the negative impact of all of that. So, yeah. as divers, even if you could it's just pick up one bottle, one yeah. can, one bit of litter, just we have a responsibility because we we know more, don't we, than mm. the land lovers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. We did a, again for the one show a couple of years ago. We did a feature on ghost fishing, and um, the team that I was working with, a couple of people who'd never heard of ghost fishing, had no idea what it was, and they were so shocked that there were big chunks of yeah. net just floating tons around. Tons and tons yeah. and tons. Catching stuff. Still fishing. Still tons fishing. fishing. Every still day fishing. that they're down there, yeah. still fishing. Yeah. 640,000 tons a year. Oh, you like cool. the facts, I do, I do. Like no, but it's a lot. 640,000 tons. Yeah. Nearly three quarters of a million tons, tons. of net every year. Yeah. Yeah, they're lost. That's, but as you yeah. say, and most people just are completely unaware of it. So again, our responsibility as divers to bring this to, to people's attention. If they're not a diver, they've never put their head underwater. People still need to know about but it. But I think it? people are maybe not so educated, are they, on the impacts of what they're doing? We we see it, they yeah. don't see it. So yeah. Yeah. if they saw what we did, they they just wouldn't do it, would they? No, um, absolutely. Yeah. But we, yeah, we've yeah, actually yeah. started a, a little thing just recently, haven't we, Clay? We've been uh, river cleaning. Yeah, we're river cleaning. Right. So we're stopping it getting into the seas and oceans before you know before right. it can get there. We're yeah. stopping it there. So we did a dive in a local uh, river, only three meters deep, isn't it? Um, but it is absolutely full of uh, shopping trolleys. There's bikes. There's you name it, it's in there. And you know, it's disgusting. And these kids are jumping off the bridge. I know. 
if they saw what was underneath, yeah. they would yeah, not yeah. be jumping. Yeah. Met, yeah. You know, poles sticking out a 45 yeah. degree angle out of the riverbed, and you look at it and you think, oh, don't jump. So on Sunday, we're going to lift it all up. We're and going we're with our lift bags, bags, and, and, uh, and I think that's something we're really keen we'll on doing, doing is just getting yeah. that out. It improves yeah. the ecosystem as well, doesn't it? Yeah. We're doing our bit for the environment, and yeah. it costs us nothing to do that. Yeah. And we're diving. Yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. quite diving, but you know, it's, it's but having like a positive impact. When the kids were learning to paddleboard, the paddleboard instructor you know put something on the front of his paddleboard and said oh we're going to go look for river chickens and the kids are like river, river chicken. chickens and he said well i'll find you a river chicken you know and it's basically stuff that's floated this rubbish yeah. but the kids again are really proud about look how much stuff i picked up from the river yeah, yeah. you know and it's slightly you know sad or you know in one respect but also they're they're making a difference they love yeah. that river Once you they, they, them yeah, and they, yeah. you know, they, they want a clean river it. to paddle in and to swim in and they're doing their bit well, to, the thing it doesn't disappear that. does it you found a coke can didn't you from 1984 olympics mm. 1984 olympics i mean it it's, doesn't never, it's go, never going to go anywhere. anywhere unless i went and picked that up yeah. that's going to stay there be there somebody would come along a diver would see that in a hundred years time that's yeah. just ridiculous you know yeah. it's uh it's crazy. It is. But One thing Jim and I often discuss, though, is that unfortunately divers tend to be like us. Like right? us. <laughs> like him. Like, what are you saying? Like him. Fat, like like him. 50 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no. The, the dive community is aging. There's no doubt about it. If you go on a liverboard mm. and you'd see the type of people that are diving. Why and is I, that? I know Why are we not? Get we think it's because people think it's expensive, like we've already discussed. Yeah. It's maybe initially it's slightly more than. Uh, you might think, but not yeah. compared to any other sport. You still need to buy all the gear. Yeah. But it's maybe the middle-aged men like Craig um, <laughs> that are, <laughs> you know, have a <laughs> Thirty-two. Um, <laughs> Plus, yeah. That, <laughs> that have oh, a disposable yeah, income and time, yeah. Yeah. whereas younger yeah. people don't have yeah. that disposable income all the time. Yeah. Or the, to to learn and to buy the equipment, so maybe it is people like Without us. Doubt. That I have doubt. a different theory. Okay, and your theory? So you go into so, some place that sells GoPro equipment, and they always have the video running, mm. and it's snowboarding, mm. wakeboarding, uh, cycling, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and every single thing that is shown, mm. you know, yeah. the, the camera mounted on, the, yeah. 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 It's, it's all adrenaline. All adrenaline. It's all high yeah, adrenaline, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. looks fantastic. And then all of a sudden, the scuba diver clip comes along, and this girl looks beautiful and serene, and it's like it's in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. And the kids of today have got so many other choices. Yeah. To, to scuba diving and scuba diving when you get them in the water they'll go wow yeah. as your daughter did yeah if they're watching those type of mm. things and they you know they're, they're that way inclined that they may want to go mountain biking and you they see the camera on the guy's helmet as he's flying down the mountain and then the clip comes on with the the you know the the basking shark swimming past at one mile an hour yeah. if i was a kid that age i'd want to go mountain i like biking. your theory it's good <laughs> i think i think you're both right actually I, I do think and also i think the thing with scuba diving is that you need to keep it up you can't yeah. just dip in and out you can't yeah. do it one year you've and got to stay years. current yeah because it's just dangerous yeah and i think people you know lots of people train don't yeah. they but do they keep going they sort of tick it's almost like i've ticked that box i've been to thailand i've done my paddling yeah. you know box tick right you know now done, i'm going to yeah. do something else yeah i guess and there is a I lot think, of that yeah and also it's like if you want to go mountain biking you've got a mountain bike in the garage you know you just pick it up and you can go, you go. it's a yeah. little bit more effort to go scuba diving yeah and sometimes so. a lot more effort yeah but but yeah. i think one of the things is that the covid has proved that people have doing less diving because the effort that they did put in was going on holiday and that's yeah. when they dive now they've got them thinking well i want to dive but oh diving in the uk i need to dry suit and and you know and they're put off by it but if they could only see that making that little bit of extra effort and diving in the uk they would then go see yeah. horses yeah. really yeah. Yeah. basking yeah. sharks yeah. if they could yeah. you know they made a little bit of effort to see and and you're yeah. a massive advocate for diving in the uk and if and which is fantastic and you know we hear you at the dive show and the you know the, the presentations that you do and and you people we we're actually not watching you we're watching the crowd and, and thinking you know people are really actually I'm listening I, so. I, I'm so. watching I mean that's the whole idea really is to share my passion I've had some fantastic encounters and I love UK diving and I just want everybody else to realize yeah. how amazing so how do we so. how do we encourage oh, more, just keep, not just yeah. more divers but younger younger, younger. Divers. How do we get to because, the kids? and female divers as well know. you know I mean, <laughs> that's something that we feel strongly about it's yeah. very difficult to try and get not just younger divers but young 
female Other divers, divers yeah. involved in what is predominantly a male dominated sport. It is in the um, UK. But isn't there's it? people like you, yeah. so yeah. girls, so. Get, you could be like Miranda, you know. <laughs> but you don't have to wear black. It's the no. black neoprene that no, puts them off. No, it's the James no, no, Bond no. You don't wear black. So Tell I don't wear purple. black. No, purple, You've got purple. turquoise, yeah. yeah. So, how come that possible, came about? So. Um, my favourite colour is purple, yeah. and um, O3 very kindly <laughs> made you a purple. <laughs> I had a dress chat with them, and I, just, uh, yeah. I, mean, just undo I my said shirt you couldn't make me one. In... Oh yes, O3. good, well done. So yeah, <laughs> well, I had a turquoise and, and red one for quite a few years, and then I just said, actually, can you can make me a purple one. It'd be really amazing. And then, oh by the way, I need, well, I got a purple one, which was great. And then I said, well, actually, I need a backup for all my gear, so I actually need a second yeah. purple one. They went, we oh. can't get hold of that neoprene anymore. Oh, no, and they no. went to a great deal of effort <laughs> i know um so thank you o3 um uh to, to source some neoprene so i've now got two identical and you still wear that now because you're kind of purple. known for your yeah. purple dry i know and i think i think they've had phone calls now people phone up going i want a purple one like miranda's <laughs> yeah. it's like can't get that neoprene when anymore, did we ever so, give her that yeah, purple one <laughs> they have been, yeah they've cursed me ever yeah. since that's my thing as i've got purple yeah. fins as well okay. so <laughs> getting back to yeah. how do we get yeah. how do we get do people know, involved i don't know it's this age-old thing is how do you get people out and about how do you get people kids away from their screens you've just got to make it really sexy and really attractive and mm. not have people like us shouting about it but maybe we need to the, 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 the younger yeah, generation maybe i need my about. daughter to start shouting about how amazing yeah. um that well there's something that off, off camera we'll we'll talk to you about off camera that maybe you could, she could get involved with so yeah. um but i think yeah. we probably do need to find you know the sort of 18 to 21 get some some ambassadors or younger yeah. who are, younger yeah, those that younger are starting to, you know to, yeah, yeah the yeah. 10 11 12 year olds because also a lot of parents think that you've got to be much older to yeah. to qualify yeah. as well and i mean i was i have to say when i was looking into it for the kids many years ago you know i couldn't believe that actually at five my son could put in on a little tiny regulator and a little tiny <laughs> a BC and he was only surface yeah. but he could do that he could feel like a scuba diver and then at eight you can do your that's your right yeah sassy or whatever it is seal team thing yeah. and you can go down to I know, two meters and you can do How little missions like Jacques and Cousteau yeah, down exactly. there it's amazing I know yeah. and, I mean when, when we don't when I took the kids to Gozo he was he was too young so he was only allowed to go to two meters and um I shouldn't probably really say this but the instructor was meant to be holding on to him all the time to make sure he stayed at two meters every time she let go he's trying to get down there yeah. 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 And then he's <laughs> just, she would she would thin down pick him up she'd go, mm, like that. He's like, mm. i want to go and now. i saw my this mum lets me in our pond away but he wanted to see because there was interesting stuff down a bit lower but yeah. he was happy you know two meters is very exciting when you're yeah. eight years old and then you hit 11 woohoo you know i've seen man so raise at two meters exactly yeah you how know. exciting is that so i think Tiger also it's getting the word yeah. out that you can do this at quite a young age and you can make it a family activity yeah. the number of families i know who say oh yeah we might take the kids diving when they're older what do you mean older they're old enough do now. It now go yeah, go yeah. on a family holiday and all of, and what a fantastic thing to get your dad qualifying yeah. with your Absolutely. daughter you know Amazing. how fantastic is that, that really so, i don't yeah. look back on life with many regrets i'm not that sort of character but the one thing that i would have loved is to learn to dive as a kid yeah mm. it, that is yeah. the one thing in my yeah. life yeah. if i'd yeah. learned as yeah. a teenager rather than i learned in 93 on my honeymoon and you know, my early 30s and it's because you know, about 50 then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks jim oh, you're so cruel <laughs> <laughs> but, but but you know that i look at kids now diving with a bit of jealousy a little bit of yeah, a green yeah, yeah, yeah. oh you yeah. don't know how lucky and they can travel around the world they can yeah. travel yeah. around the world yeah. and just sort of work for uh, accommodation and food and yeah. anywhere in the world and yeah. absolutely i mean amazing wow. thing to do during your gap year if you can you know get qualified to be, be an instructor and, yeah. go and then go the off and amazing. earn a little yeah. bit of money and walk around cool do thailand yeah. and aussie and yeah. you know all of that Definitely. so you're, you're a paddy ambassador aren't you what I does i mean i'm a bassa yeah, diver, yeah, <laughs> <bassa -diver. laughs> so, so that happened quite diver. recently during during lockdown actually uh, so i haven't really done very much <laughs> what does it involve does it involve bringing in new, new it does it, it, younger it divers? just it involves talking to people about diving and getting as many people yeah. involved as possible and sharing stories and sharing passion and enthusiasm um, and just getting people fired up about diving and especially for me obviously we go back to diving in the UK you know telling people about how amazing the diving is right here in the UK so your talks at go diving when I've watched them mm -hmm. you know they're really nice talks really exciting and then you're sort of hooked in straight away because you've got some great stories so 
can you, as a Paddy ambassador, can you not, and we're talking about youngsters, take that into schools? I do. Yeah? I do. Yeah, that's why I wrote the book. And I take that book into schools and I go and talk, I, I share my d diving enthusiasm and passion with, with schools. I do a lot of talks yeah. in schools. And I love that because there's one thing sort of broadcasting and being on the one show and millions of people watching, it's lovely. But you having a direct connection with 500 people yeah. in a room, you have much more power there. You have much more impact. You know, people come up to you afterwards and whether they want a selfie or they want to buy a book or, or they just mm. want to say hi. Yeah. That is so much more rewarding. And I mean, I would do that every day if I could. And do you I get sort of, really do you see a, a sign up kind of for, for a school? Because yeah, I don't know if it's directly kids. translatable really, but um, I mean, I have had people write to me and said, you know, because of, hearing you talk or seeing you talk I've now become a scuba diver and you know I did my first open water dive last week or something like that and occasionally you get people yeah. writing and, and that is I just think if you know one extra person has signed up because of something I said or something I shared with them then that's my job done yeah. I mean you know obviously I'd like hundreds of thousands of people to be be signing up but um I'll just keep on shouting about it as, as much as I possibly can I think especially for kids you know it's a world that most of them are very unfamiliar with and they just you know just put on a mask and just put your head underwater and it's this whole I was gonna say because if we don't get the youngsters involved and they are all like Craig then you know yeah. in time I know it's, it's I know gonna we are gonna get older. To, to nothing yeah. isn't it yeah. it's uh, gonna yeah. I'll be there in my Zimmer frame no but the there's end, not but... gonna be much of a dive it'll be more of a, yeah. a niche for a, it's well, the rebreathers and mean, the deep divers that maybe you've got something maybe I should get my kids I mean I haven't really I, I try not to get my kids too involved with the telly side of things I'm, I'm very measured about what they do and what they do, don't do um, but actually, maybe this is the thing. I should actually get both of them involved in, in you know, I trying think to so. promote I think, diving I think for young the, people. You know, that's so. such a big thing, isn't yeah. it, that we've got to try I think the, the huge thing is, is it's all well and good, people of our age saying to kids how good diving is. Yeah. But we're not cool, are we? No. <laughs> I'm not cool. If, I tell <laughs> my kids I'm not cool. If kids are telling yeah. kids how yeah. cool diving yeah. is. If kids are sharing on social media, look what I did at the weekend, mm. to yeah. their mates, yeah. that's a whole different world of access yeah. uh, and exposure to the sport yeah. the, than we're ever able yeah. to give. And, and I think that is where probably this is the slightly challenging thing about living in the UK is because a lot of us dive in dry suits right the way throughout the year. Yep, um, and so, and to train a child, to train a child in a dry suit, a little bit more tricky isn't it and also yeah. to get a dry suit to fit a child because they grow so yeah. fast so you really are limited to sort of you know wetsuits and probably two or three of them um and so there is that's more of a challenge i yeah. think you probably if you're being realistic about it, it's not impossible um but you're probably looking at therefore a family holiday abroad um, to get them to started because you also and, don't uh, want those children to, to spend all the time underwater thinking about how cold they are yeah. and I have to say my little boy in Gozo he did get cold we did a lot of free diving and, that's in Gozo. Um, and that was in Gozo with a long wetsuit on but he was quite skinny then he's got a bit more yeah. muscle yeah, on, on now, now yeah. um, but back then if you've you know if you've got a child who feels the cold then unless you're in you know in the Red Sea or Thailand or something like that it is going to be more challenging yeah. and that's just the reality of living where we live isn't it so when you go to the schools maybe you know, I'm sure you've all thought of this, and Paddy, why couldn't you take a local dive centre with you and Paddy and say, right, here's the information, mm. take that home to show your parents. If you want to sign up, go to the local dive centre and get an idea of how much impact that's having, and you might get more people yeah. sign up. Do you know, you we absolutely could do that. It's just not something I have done, but it's it's absolutely what we should be doing. And that, I, mean, I think, that's a, I think at the dive show, way, what was quite it? interesting, there was a scout group there, or there's an initiative with Paddy and scouts, I think, about getting scouts to do try dives. Yeah, yeah. And I think we need to go into schools and offer try dives. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's something that I can do with Paddy is say, right, okay, I know it's a lot of money, but let's take, you know, every year six or every year yeah. seven or whatever, and give them the opportunity to do a try yeah. dive. You know, they do cycling proficiency and they do golf and whatever. You know, why can't we do, and it doesn't have to be in the sea. No. It doesn't have to be no. in a lake. It can it be, could in, a be in a swimming pool. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. In fact, both the children for their eighth birthdays um, did try dives mm. and brought friends along. And we had so yeah, much fun party. just in, yeah. a, in, a, in a pool at two yeah. meters. Exactly. You know, throwing That's stuff to each other perfect. underwater perfect. and just, you know, just feeling like a scuba diver. So we all so need, we to need to focus that on that a little bit more. No, but that's what I mean. That's, right. that yeah. seems like a, that involved. seems like a simple fix. Nothing ever that easy, is it? Yeah. But if you were there talking how you talk in the passionate, enthusiastic way that you chat about what you've done, mm. you had Paddy there 
and the local dive centre or dive centres. Yeah. And then the kids are like, yeah, kids, here's a bit of paper. Go and tell your parents you want to do this. Yeah. yeah. Right, that I'm going to do that now. That That's seems my like challenge. an easy one, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it is an easy one. And yeah, I don't. So yeah. instead of one, so, yeah. you might get three or four. Yeah. Well, that's three or four from every school you go to. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. I mean, you're starting to get up to yeah. some good numbers there, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but always when I when I speak to a school, I always say, in fact, I speak to any audience. I always want to gauge how many divers there are. Yeah. You know, you go and speak to the local WI. It's normally one diver <laughs> in the audience, and that's the husband. Of yeah. yeah. Stereotype. Sorry. Um. But but it's often quite amazing how many primary school children have actually dived. Mm. So um, you know, even if one hand goes up, I'm pleasantly surprised yeah um so it is definitely it's it's more on people's radar but you're you're so right I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm really let that be my challenge for the next yeah. year yeah. Yeah. We'll report back Do <laughs> that and see if we get some sign -ups. can we yeah. ask you about your charitable work because you yes. i mean first of all that must be a huge honor to be the president of the rspb i mean we we were with yolo, yolo williams, williams yeah. uh, last week yeah, yeah, he's yeah, lovely yeah, and he's lovely. him and his birds i mean I yeah. that's how he yeah, refers yeah, to them yeah. my birds yeah, you know, yeah, and, uh, yeah absolutely but, but yeah. you know that that must have been 2013 13, is it yeah. since you uh, yeah i think so yeah yeah, yeah. is that yeah, worrying that we know more yeah. about oh, you, you than do, you? I know. <laughs> but i love it i mean it's a, again it's just another way of um sort of trying to convey my passion my enthusiasm for wildlife with other people trying to get people more connected <laughs> we so, got is dog, dog, you're gonna come in she normally gets involved you're gonna come and say hello well we actually um, have so, uh, something in common there because you and i are both marine mammal medics for oh, british yes. divers marine life, marine life rescue. rescue yes so uh, yeah, i get jumped out on an inflatable uh, seal yes <laughs> with you a, did the training have, course, yeah uh, with uh, a wet towel you've yeah. saved quite a lot recently haven't you yeah i've have un you? unfortunately you know because of where we are on the norfolk coast we have 45 percent of the whole world's grey seal, seal population, population yeah. there um which will start pupping in a in a few weeks time in, you know um uh, november really uh, uh but we've just had the uh common harbour uh, seals have been uh, um pupping over the you know august and we've had too many call outs lots of mouth infections and so unfortunately yes i've been out and about on the beaches rescuing seals a lot recently but i know you're also a, a trained yeah. marine mammal medic and have done the, and, and a yeah, patron the for, for us at the bdmlr so yeah. thank you yeah yeah but, no pleasure and i mean i just think that you look at any wildlife presenter we're all involved in charity work because we all you know, we, we need to put back. something back yeah. absolutely you know here am i making my living out of this you know it's really really important to put something back and um and also just to help promote these charities as much as possible and if that's if we can do that through telly or through any other way then then that's really really important to us so um yeah i just <sighs> I wish I, I wish I had more time to do more. It's always the problem, yeah. isn't yeah. it? It's just not yeah. enough time to, yeah. to to do everything you want to do. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, and I think the grey seal is your favourite mammal. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Favourite bird is a puffin. I know it's pretty predictable, isn't it? And the grey seal's favourite. That's funny. I, I opened the book this morning at a random page. This yeah. book to my daughter. And I ended up on page 42, which is the sh all the sharks. Yeah. And 43 is the sharks. And then I flick through it, and it happened to be a grey seal at the bottom in the bottom right hand corner she went oh <laughs> <laughs> what's not to love about yeah. a seal though i mean they're just the best don't they really yeah. so. well, my... but i mean we talked about a lot, a lot about you know big charismatic megafauna but i mean i do love the the, the tiny stuff i do love it when you've got a dive Nudibranks and you just sit and there and, and yeah, yes yeah, yeah. i mean how amazing is a nudibranch yeah, and i'm quite happy there, just yeah. sit there and just right okay i'm just going to sit and watch you because you're fascinating yeah so and um we were talking about swanage pier Earlier yeah. as well. I mean, I've had some amazing dives under a pier in Swanage. I mean, how That's watching crazy, a cork wing wrasse make a nest out of seaweed bit by bit, you know, going selecting bits of seaweed, coming in, weaving them almost, you know, to make a nest. I mean, who knew? Yeah. It's fascinating, you but you'll just sit hours. and watch that. Yeah, yeah, better than any telly, absolutely. Yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah. um, we have, you know, it's not forgetting all the, the little tiny things. You know, it's very easy to talk about seals and dolphins because yeah. that's what people can relate to, but. Um, yeah, we need to. Although I did get criticised once um, for getting excited about barnacles and mussels and limpets <laughs> and things like that. Oh dear. And I just thought, well, you know, I can get excited about rock pooling. That's, that's oh, rock fine. pooling is one of so, the most. The when best I was a kid, ever. yeah. When I was a kid at West Runton and going to rock pools and getting crabs and. 
it's the most amazing thing ever, isn't yeah. it? And you kind of take your kids to do that now, and they still love it. Yeah. I mean, never get bored of rock crawling. No, it's ever. amazing, isn't it? So, what about influences in diving? Have you got any big influences throughout your diving career? Um, I suppose um, going right back, you know, people like Hans and Lottie Hart and Jack Cousteau, and um, uh. I don't know. I mean, a lot of the free divers, I just marvel at what they do, having had a little go at free diving as well and um, realising real how challenging yeah. that is. Yeah. Uh, that always yeah. amazes me. Um, I don't know, really. What about I'm influences just, so, in your career? In my career, well, obviously, I was, I was brought up with David Attenborough. And, yeah. my ch and what I have to say is, is amazing is the children have been brought up with David Attenborough. And I know it's just like, you know, it's a really predictable answer, isn't it? But... Um, the fact that you know my dad just sat me in front of every yeah. single natural world, wildlife, or whatever he was narrating, and, and that my Such children. An have done but even exactly now, no matter what he does, it's like David Attenborough's got amazing. a new episode, he's got a new series fact, out. As a parent, <laughs> yeah. you know, very early on when the children were tiny, I sort of made a pledge to myself: those kids have got to meet David Attenborough. This is really important, and I'll do whatever <laughs> I need to <laughs> yeah. do. Uh, and luckily, there was a screening of one of the Planet Earth. Um, series in Bristol and I was hosting it and um, so you know that then they say right you've only got uh, you, you can come and we can give you one other ticket to bring one guest and I went no no, no I have two children I am not picking my favorite child no. <laughs> uh, and I yeah. actually said Just can't do that. Actually, which I'm, one would it have been by way? A... <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. <laughs> um, and I you know or bringing my husband and leaving my two children at home that would have been awful and I actually dug my heels and I said I'm not going to do the event unless my entire family come with me so they bent the rules and we you know and my husband and my children were able to come and then there's the okay they're in the room with him but how do we actually engineer you know I just wanted him to say hello to them and yeah. to get that picture and and we did and it was incredible and he's just I mean the kids just basically were dumbstruck I mean they were like oh my god it's, it is God I, you know it's just yeah. like meeting we're so privileged to live yeah. through his lifetime Absolutely. Absolutely. so he's that was him. amazing and both of them have their picture of the, them and David Attenborough you know on Fantastic. their See, that's side pretty, table that's pretty you know, cool that's really, really so if you cool. get into diving youngsters you could meet David Attenborough David Attenborough <laughs> and also Steve Backshaw I mean he's done wonders yeah. for the kids yeah. if you'd you know, like to put in a really so good word for us to speak to to Steve, Steve shall I give him a call? Yeah, give him He's a call. Really nice just guys. just tell him how nice him. we yeah, are and how great we are. Yeah. Our interviewing skills are so I think so he's got fantastic. his hands full at the moment <laughs> yeah. with three yeah. tiny kids yeah, as well. I mean, that's but you know, we'll, really we're willing him, so. to give up our time for him okay. if he wants I'll, to I'll, yeah. I'll have, to <laughs> have a car wheel But he, but joking aside, he is amazing. The kids all want to be Steve Backshaw. My little boy's got all Steve Backshaw books. You know, they just, he comes on the telly and everything stops. Yeah. He's just been amazing. Yeah. And so, so knowledgeable, yet, you know, it's not geeky, not no. and weird, passionate, you know, just, enthusiastic, oh everything. Oh my God, you just drink in cool. every word he yeah. says. He is Absolutely amazing. Cool, isn't he? I do yeah. hate him, mate. Yeah. I know, I do too. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> is that why you'd eat him? <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> we, we could talk for hours. Shall we? But... Let's talk for hours. I've got we one more. I've got a really out, good we'll question. We put hours. an end on it. Yeah, I know. won't have an end. I need one question. One more question. One more. I heard can you we do an end first? I, I heard you can play cards with do. your feet. I know. Where did you read that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. Well, I used to be able to. It was one of my party tricks that I've got. I don't know. I used to do lots of crazy things with my feet, but I can actually hold cards and deal cards with my feet. But prehensile toes, I think. <laughs> oh, no. What You've been reading too much, yeah, too much stuff that's out there. Power of the I internet. It's amazing yeah. what it's you can find there, out. It? Yeah, really remember bad. that guy when you were 18? <laughs> that, <laughs> that bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's here um, now. Yeah. And here he is. <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh do your end the end. So, no, yeah. so only oh. we will talk for hours. I yeah, know, right, but no. if we don't have an ending on, we can't. If He's going to do out. his ending. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we can, we can yeah. talk for hours, and we and we probably will. But we really want to say thank you for for inviting us down, for having a chat. It's been absolutely fascinating, awesome. and, and uh, we've both really yeah, enjoyed absolutely. it. Absolutely, uh, it didn't rain. It didn't rain. Yeah. No, yeah. tea was fantastic. <laughs> we got chocolate biscuits. Well, 
I know. Brown teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do now. Yeah, we'll now. We'll polish them off. Yeah. Thank you for my mug. You're very, I very love welcome. My mug. Look yeah. at my mug. It's Miranda's great. mug. Yeah. It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. It's a lot of fun. I, I, I could talk about it forever. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Us too. Thank you. <laughs> well, now we can because it runs out. I don't care. Yeah. We're not <laughs> so now, now you can carry yeah. on. Now you can carry on and say whatever you like as long as you've got an ending on there. Oh, well, you, you, you could yeah. do if we got film. You could sign those on camera, couldn't we? We could get authenticity. <laughs> here of, of Mer have you got a pen? I have of course. Yes, I have a pen. Yeah. He has everything. Somewhere in a pocket. <laughs> I know I've got a sharpie here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's a crayon. Oh look and it works and everything. There we go, there's really? one. Yeah. So how are you going to sign them? Who, because we don't know who to. No, so we'll just, no, as long lots as of love, Miranda. Miranda. Yeah. Lots of love. Enjoy the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Best wishes, Miranda. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. that sort of thing. Great. So exactly. you're two of these. What do people have to do to get to... It's to just to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Like most things now, you need um, subscribers and, uh, and followers, subscribe don't you? Them. So um, all they have to do is subscribe and that's it. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then we'll pull the names out of a hat and uh, the winners all get sent the books. Okay, yeah. and these are beautifully illustrated. Oh, they say, are. They're absolutely the lady stunning, who did aren't the they? illustration. So we're talking about rock pools, and yeah. she brings a rock pool. Like, I did a lovely. We did um, uh, book tours and signings and stuff like that in festivals last year, and it was really fun. I, I I went with her, and she showed the kids how she did the rock pool section. So she said, "Well, we, with the rock pools, I wanted you to imagine that you are a limpet or a crab in a rock pool. So we're not looking down, down rock into pool. it. You, in the rock you pool. are that. So you yeah. know, So here you go. Draw your rock pool." So all the kids are drawing their rock people right you know and what are you seeing around you and all the different colors and everything and she just brings it alive her illustrations are absolutely yeah, stunning they're colorful, just, aren't they, this they're... is the one i just love i mean so a book about the sea is going to be green and blue she's got orange she's got purple she's got turquoise the in there it's amazing the, oh, my favorite one. Yeah. So, the sharks that i mentioned earlier there that's yeah my I mean, so I was, I have to say, when I saw her illustrations, my heart just raced um, and it was lovely. Oh, and her puffin as well. So she lives near the Isle of May and right. so, um, and she really loves watching puffins. And so she's just got the, the character of a puffin and the gannets as well. Yeah, you know, if you've brilliant. been in the water, yeah. you've seen and the diving gannets down, diving yeah. down. That's exactly what they look yeah. like. Yeah. And it's stylized, well, but it's, and... it's a gannet, you yeah. know? But and these are all fa fact factual, factual as well, yeah. isn't it? So we had long conversations about, you know, if it's a ballon ras or a corkling ras, it's got to look like a ballon ras or a corkling yeah. ras. And yes. she's like, really? So yeah, that for me, <laughs> even not for anybody else, accurate. for me, it's got to be accurate. Yeah. And so she's done a huge amount of research and made sure that everything is scientifically accurate, but she hasn't lost her style. Yeah. And that I love. So Jill I'm Calder, just getting my three-year-old granddaughter her, and she's now all of a sudden so fascinated by fish and the sea and all my shark photos I show her and you know all the photography I've done and she's now sitting on my lap show me pictures show me pictures yeah. and so yeah well, I think it's good it's not just about the creatures in the sea it's like you've got polar, polar bears, bears haven't you yeah. and like you say the gannets and puffins and yeah. Everything that's involved with the seas and oceans. I think it's amazing, bro. Thank yeah. you. I think it's amazing too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. But yeah, I'm just that trying to find the one about the um yeah, the shipwrecks as well. Because you know, yeah. you dive a shipwreck and you sort of think, oh maybe it is a bit sort of dark and torches. And so yeah, the, I love the, the torch, the illumination, and then actually the colour of the fish as well yeah. brings the whole thing alive. So yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Amazing. So is that you and Steve Batchel there? That's the two of us, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs>